Hello everyone, I'm Adrian Rios and the other day I was talking about um, different face shapes and I showed four face shapes that were different ways to highlight and contour and then I showed you a kind of very different looking chiseled masculine highlight and contour. All the products that I'm going to show you I actually have on my face right now as well and we're going to get real close so you guys can see what that actually looks like. And then I'm going to do something for you guys that no artist ever does and I'm going to take you through my house through different levels of lighting and into the outside area where you can see what it looks like in natural light so that you can see it. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe, tell your friends, tell everyone. I am going to be doing a lot of different looks. This is just one look that I do and I've selected to do, but there are many, many styles of makeup that I can do and put your questions, comments below and let me know what kind of looks that you would like to see. All right, so now we can get started. The look that we're actually going to be talking about today is a men's three-dimensional chiseled square shape look. Now I say three-dimensional because we do not live in a 2D world. Our face is not flat, it's multi-dimensional, and as much as it is painting, it is also sculpting simultaneously when you are working with makeup. The other images that you guys saw the four um, little, little clips of me showing different types of highlight where it comes all under here and down the bridge of the nose. For me, I know a lot of makeup artists like to show those techniques and they kind of seem to regurgitate the same look over and over and over. Um, it lacks a little bit of innovation to me and it's a little bit dated as well. Not very useful in a multimedia world, a video social media world. It's just kind of basic bitch kind of makeup to me, to be honest. They do work, but only if you're ever f wanting to look good from like one or two vantage points, which is typically why on social media you only see people taking pictures from like here or like kind of the side angle because it's just not very flattering in all lighting in all directions. What we're going to be talking about is a directional makeup and something that looks great every angle in any lighting, um, no matter what. I feel like you're probably going to learn quite a bit here. I definitely teach this very, very differently than other people do. Like notes down here, so I'm trying to read and make sure that I get all this stuff and we can kind of follow along with the video. If you want to continue using those other techniques and those four techniques, it's actually really, really great for photography. It's really great if you want to have a more feminized shape, if you want a more androgynous look. Those are great techniques. What I'm going to be showing you is a men's makeup. Not putting a little concealer right here that a lot of these men's makeup brands like to show you because that's not men's makeup, that's called a fucking touch up. That's all it is. Now the way I paint on all those lines, I don't actually do that very often. Uh, it's not something I like to wear as much. It's a little bit heavy. It is definitely a full coverage look, not really something I would want to do every day, but from it serves its purposes, right? So I take in my Kitco concealer brush and I really kind of like certain brushes for certain things. It helps me articulate certain looks, certain lines. This is really, really precise and it helps me get into all those dark um, contour colors. So the contour color I wear is Huda Beauty. It's the medium shade. I like this product because it gives me the shape that I need and the definition and etching that I want without it being too opaque and too heavy. A lot of times when I watch people do contour, they're using dark, dark concealers. And yes, you can do that. However, it also adds weight at the same time as it is add, um, adding that dimension. And then I use three concealers, three concealers. So when I'm painting and sculpting my face, I work in a three-dimensional mindset. So three concealers. All of these are Urban Decay. They are all water-based formulations, which means they're very, very thin. So, and they blend really, really well, which I like. And they are waterproof, so they stay where they're supposed to stay. I use shade 40 CP on that high point area here. And then I use the 50 around it. And then when I get to my nose, I actually mix a little bit of the white into the 40 CP to make it lighter. And the reason for that, the other images that you saw where the contour and highlight was placed, they're using two colors. And the reason I don't like that is when you're thinking about a three-dimensional space, the nose or the tip of the nose is not in the same vantage point as like your cheekbone, right? Or under eye area. So it doesn't make sense to put the same tone here and here because they're not in the same frame of reference. 
I use the white because it's a neutral shade and it doesn't hurt the undertone, which I love on the 40 CP, which is a cool color. Just lightens it up and brightens the color to place on the nose or in areas that I really want to kind of pop. The other reason I use the concealers um, versus the contour, which is a sheer product. Concealers, because we're playing with light. Light responds differently to different colors, different brightness levels, and different opacities. So I use a full coverage concealer to ensure that it's opaque enough. And I use the lighter concealers to bring and draw attention to certain areas to help kind of restructure my face. The way I also paint my face is wherever the light, you can see where the light's hitting it and where it looks the brightest, right about there, which means this, place, this position here is pretty high. So as I'm painting my face, I'm literally using the light to kind of sculpt and place things. This way, when I go outside or I'm in different vantage points or different lighting, it looks great from every angle because the light is breaking against where it does naturally anyway. Of course, there's wiggle room in there, which is how I reshape things. Makeup reveals itself in light. So if you have a linear, straight, like contour line like this, like a lot of ladies do, as soon as they touch that light and the light bends right here, right? It's gonna break and you're gonna see that contour line, which tends for me personally, it looks like shit. So I don't do it that way. part of it is you just watched me um, blend it. Why do I use the Beauty Blender and I use Quick Fix? So when I use Beauty Blenders, you're supposed to saturate them with water and squeeze out a bunch of the excess. I don't like doing that. Water from the faucet, it's not filtered, there's a bunch of crap in it, um, and it's not really intended to work with makeup necessarily. It's intended to remove things or wash things. So I use Quick Fix from Urban Decay, which is a coconut smelling primer spray so it's designed for foundation. I saturate the sponge with that and I use it to blend. The other reason for the blending this this way is because a lot of makeup today, especially those concealers, are high performance, they're designed to dry down faster, which makes the wear longer, um, which means you don't always have a lot of time to fiddle with it. This will buy you that time so you don't get skipping or lifting on you when you're pressing it in. Okay, so the very next step is I take a tinted moisturizer. This happens to be from Becca. Now, Becca, unfortunately, um, I don't think they're gonna be around past September. So if you see these, grab it. Um, otherwise, I ran out of my NARS um, tinted moisturizer. If you like that one, you can go with that one too because that one's probably gonna be around for a little bit. So I take the sheer product and I take another My Kit Co brush, which is their medium coverage brush, which is very, very important. Tinted moisturizer because they typically have SPF in them, so it's going to protect your skin. I select ones that have a little bit more of a brilliance to them. They're also very sheer, and they tend to have almost this gelatinous appearance where the pigments are suspended. So when you layer them over a full coverage product, which I do and you see me do, I do it in the mid ranges. So the ranges of the kind of mid-tone concealer is where I like to place this, and I blend over everything. So what you're seeing is the shape there with this transparent quality to it which is why this looks like this and not caked up makeup because you're actually seeing this transparency but it's not skin that you're looking at through it you're looking at concealers so hopefully that makes some sense to you guys and i do love that it has spf you should always wear an spf this one just looks really really skin like and tinted moisturizers tend to be a little bit more forgiving Okay, so the baking and the translucent powder, this is one size fits all. You're gonna dump it into the lid here and you're gonna take your dampened beauty blender, you're gonna dampen it with a setting spray, not the quick fix, okay? And the reason I do that is for the same reason earlier, it kind of helps me move the product um, and set things simultaneously so I'm saving myself some steps. So what I like to do is anywhere I put that highlight color or that concealer, I go in first. By the way, you always blend concealer first in lighter shades from light to dark. It's just easier to do it that way. Anyway, okay, so I highlight here, 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 and here, 
and then I think a little bit over the brow and then I also do these like kind of point things. It goes back to that principle I was telling you about earlier about opacity and how light responds to it. I use a translucent color because I don't want to really hurt the integrity of the foundations of the concealers. I actually just want to lift a little bit of the color out and brighten them just like a smidge. Um, it also really ensures that the concealers do not move and it sets them really, really well and helps you like really, so when the light hits, because it's even more opaque now with that powder there, it's gonna really pop. So then now you just saw me do some contour. So as I am baking, I like to do my contour. And of course I use the king of contour, Scott Barnes palette to do this. And as I am chiseling out and getting the dimension and shape that I want, cutting out where I want to cut out, I am very, very deliberate about where I do it. Be very deliberate about where you place your brush first, because the first point of placement where it touches is the darkest point. So when I'm doing this, which you guys saw, I dust it here and out, here and down. Um, and then touching all the other places. It just makes a lot more sense. And then by the time we are ready for the bake to come off, it's already done and you can just dust it off with the same fan brush. But when you're doing this level of makeup, you wanna make sure that if you're highlighting as heavy as that, it has a counter contrast, right? It needs that contour. Otherwise it becomes unbalanced. And that's like one of the first ways that I clock people um, with a lot of makeup on. So now we've dust off the bake. The next powder I like to go in with is from Givenchy. This is shade 5. Um, it has like an orange gold tone, but more importantly, it's a very refractive powder, not reflective. Things that are reflective are going to be more like highlighters or pressed highlighters or glittery looking things. That's not what you want. You don't want to look oily. You don't want to look glittery. You want something refractive because what it's doing is the little prisms and crystals inside these powders they pull the light in one way and bounce it out another, making the skin appear more skin-like, a lot smoother. So this is really best for finishing, and it gives a very natural finish over that very matte powder. So I like to dust it there so that when I go outside, it refracts natural light, making it look more even and disguising any highlight or contour lines. So people always ask me, am I worried about my makeup moving? Am I worried about it rubbing off on people? And I'm never really concerned about that because I know how to set my makeup properly. So after I've done all of those powders and the main part of the complexion, you could actually stop right there if you wanted. It is technically set with the powder. Now I will blend it a little bit further, which you just saw me do. I take all nighter setting spray, saturate it with the beauty blender. Um, a different beauty blender than I used before, and I press it into the skin, really making sure that I go over any lines that I see or anything that's looking like it's lifted a little bit. This really ensures that the makeup is a long wear, that everything blends seamlessly, and it has a much more skin-like appearance this way. So let's talk bronzer application. I know a lot of people like to do the bronzer as contour. Bronzer is too warm for contour, to be honest. If, if you do, I have a little hair. If you do bronzer as contour and it's matte, sometimes it looks muddy. If you do contour that has like the Becca one that has like kind of shimmery, sparkly things, it's counterintuitive because when something's in contour, it's in shadow, it needs to recede. But if it's capturing light and pulling light in, it's doing the opposite. So you don't really want to do that either. So how do you do the bronzer? It's not the three. I think that's such a crock crap. Um, don't do it that way. That doesn't make any sense either. How you're going to do bronzer is if you envision going out into the sunlight, close your eyes and think about where the sun hits you first. And if you did that linear line, you would typically want to follow that line. But because I did a different shape for you guys, you want to follow that similar square shape. So it it goes with the same motif that you've already established, the foundation. It is called foundation for a reason. It is the foundation for everything you layer over it. So anything that you layer over it should go with those lines as well. If you don't, it's like you built a house and you just start 
hanging shit up and it doesn't really make any sense, right? You wanna follow the same damn lines. That's really what you should do. I typically wear either the Becca bronzer, um, which is so sad they're going out of business, so I gotta stock up on these. Um, or I will wear NARS Casino. It is a little bit red for me, but sometimes when I want that kind of burnt brushed look, I'll go with the Casino. Always want to comb the powders through the brow, through your mustache, your beard, if you have one. Um, you don't want the powder in there because it, if you go out in natural light, you'll be able to see it and it looks, if you have a darker beard, it'll look a little gray or ashy looking. You don't want that to happen. So brush it out. It's really easy, especially if you're going to do any kind of beard contouring, which is in one of my other videos. So if you haven't seen me do beard contour, I am wearing a different beard shape than I wore in the original video because I record things out of sequence sometimes um, for different reasons. Anyway. So brush out all the powder, etch in where you need to etch in and fill. It does matter. Okay, so the eyelash curler. I know a lot of guys get hung up on the eyelash curler and they think, oh, it's too feminine, whatever. Bro, be secure in your masculinity. It's just a fucking eyelash curler, right? It's gonna open your eye. It's gonna make you look a lot more awake. And for me, I feel like it makes me look a little bit more exotic. I only really like to do the tips of my lashes to give them a slight lift and curl. Uh, my lashes are really long. I use lash serums and brow serums. So if I curl them at the base, like a lot of women do, they would be too long and they actually hit my eyebrows and it's annoying. So just do the tips, <laughs> just the tip. If we haven't heard or said that a lot before. Okay, so filling your brows, filling in your beard. I use Brow Blade. Um, it has two sides to this. There's a liquid side when I want to do like my brows like I have now where they're laminated and more feathered. So it gives me really, really good control. Now in the video, I have a different brow look and brow shape. I like something more structured, more dense, and the brow has to match the same level of makeup that we've already done with the foundation. When I see people walking around with full face cake makeup and their brows look kind of pitiful or weak, like they didn't really take the time to level up the brow to match the other makeup, it just looks a little unfinished um, and very novice or inexperienced to me. Anyway, with the pencil side, I like to etch in give structure. Again, if you're curious about the beard contouring, go to the other video to watch it. It's a really informative, detailed video about that. Um, I line the lips, fill it in, and I do the same color so that there's some cohesion to the look. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to secure the hair. Now my beard, I'm, I'm, I'm Mexican, and my beard hair is very thick, it's very coarse, and it does whatever the hell it wants. Same with my eyebrows, which is why I get them laminated. It helps me better control the hair. Now I go back and forth on this. Sometimes I use clear, sometimes I use one that's tinted. Both are from Urban Decay, both are waterproof. The reason I don't always use a tint is I don't always want added definition or added density of color. Sometimes I just want the clear to keep it looking like a natural brow and give me that control. Now I have gray hair here and because I did not feel like coloring my beard today and I was feeling lazy as shit, I just took a tinted one and I just comb it through. You can even see probably a little bit of the hair peeking out. Um, still looks good, doesn't move, waterproof, not worried about it, you know? Moving on, this is actually my favorite part of the makeup. This is the part where it really kind of comes to life and it gives you that skin-like finish. So earlier I was talking about that gelatinous look that the tinted moisturizers have where it suspends color. It's the same thing. Now you can layer a highlighter or glitter and then you can layer a glisten on top of it, but then it still looks layered. If I'm going to mix bronzer, um, sometimes I'll mix the bronzer directly with the balm. So this is from Honest Beauty. This is, I don't know how many of these I've purchased. I go through these like so fast because I use them pretty much every day. And you can use it on your lid. You can use it anywhere on the face. And if you see that glow there, that's exactly what it is. 
And what it's doing is it's bending light, giving it volume, shape, making it look more skin-like, less like powder, less like makeup. Now with highlighter, there are different ranges of highlighter. There is highlighter like concealers that you use to kind of reshape and give you um, that opaqueness, right, that you want and that coverage that you want. And then there's highlighters that are like pretty and glowy and glitzy and glittery looking. And then there are glisten highlighters. Glisten highlighters are because it's not color. It's just this beautiful, natural skin looking thing. And just makes me feel really high, my skin feel really hydrated when I live in Arizona and it's freaking hot outside and it's super dry, right? So it's a really great way to kind of add that luster back to the skin without it being overdone. Now there's Honest Beauty, which is kind of my go-to. The other one that I use, or actually there's three others that I kind of tend to stick with. Um, there's one from Makeup by Mario, which is great. Danessa Myricks um, also makes one. Now the one from Danessa is slightly glossier looking, so I tend to stick with my Honest Beauty um, or Make It by Mario. That's usually the ones that I go with. So I do like to do one final set and press just to make sure that everything is perfectly smooth. Normally this whole entire process, if I were to do this um, full coverage, it takes me probably like an hour. Now, the way I did my face stay with the exact same products, I just did a different shape, my normal shape. Obviously, it doesn't look as structured as like chiseled. So the makeup does a lot for me. I don't always like to wear that. It's just too much. It's a lot of work. I'm freaking lazy day to day. It's just, it's a lot, you know? So this way, same products, a little softer, but I like to secure it and make sure that it doesn't move anywhere. And that's how I do it. And then the very last thing that you guys see is this blue lip balm from Becca as well. And I like the blue because anything that's blue, any woman should tell you if she doesn't already know, that blue tones make your teeth look white. So you don't want to put too much on this one because if you do, it is color. It'll look corpsey. You just want a hint of it. So your teeth look nice and white. pretty simple look this is kind of like a men's full coverage no makeup makeup and now we are going to do what I told you I was gonna do so here we go I'm gonna turn this vertically for you guys so this is at the window in the bathroom good right and then this is the light in the bathroom no tricks and we're gonna walk through Someone was literally just naked on the floor, didn't realize I was recording. I don't care if everyone knows that. <laughs> now we're gonna go down the stairs. Do, do, do. See the makeup doesn't look bad. It still looks normal, right? Now we are in the kitchen dining area. I'm gonna walk over to my makeup kit, actually because I need to grab something. Ooh. Isn't this fun? Make wipes. All right, now we are gonna walk outside. So you can see the light is changing on it and you can see what it looks like. And then we're gonna take a makeup wipe. And I hope you guys all loved this video. Um, I know a lot of people do tutorials, a lot of people do makeup online but I don't always love what they do. I think a lot of it is good editing um, and I'm not a great editor. And honestly, I don't really feel like I need to because I know what the fuck I'm doing. Anyway, all right. So now I'm gonna take off all this makeup so you guys can see the difference. No makeup and disgusting, all right? So much product. Makeup. No makeup. Makeup, no makeup. And then we're gonna go back inside so you can see it in the original light in which I recorded all of this, which just was the downstairs bathroom. Whoa, it's hot outside. Okay. 
I'm gonna tell you, that brow stuff, it's hard to take off. <laughs> and there you have it. No makeup, makeup. So when you were working with men and doing a men's makeup, let's switch it back. Fuck. <laughs> men's makeup for me is about finesse. It's about detail, authenticity. Um, it's about really honing in and being precise. Um, otherwise, it's very, very noticeable. So if you're looking for makeup that's a little bit more discreet, continue following. Tell everyone, tell your friends. If you guys want to see a different look, well, let me know. Happy to do it. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.